I'm joined in studio by DAMP Yusuf Qasim, who at 24 is the youngest member of parliament. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much, Jerusha. Now, it's obviously quite extraordinary. 24 years old, you're a member of parliament. Can you talk us through your political career? Where did you start and how did you end up in parliament? I think the most important thing to note is I never had any ambitions to be in parliament, nor did I have ambitions initially to be in politics. And there's been a lot of media coverage around my age and being the youngest member of parliament, but I also don't think that's anything substantial. I think what it represents is for the Democratic Alliance to acknowledge the value that any person can contribute within the party. And my own interest and spark in politics started at uh, a campus level. Um, in my first year, I founded the DA Students Organization primarily as a vehicle to effect uh, political change. And from seeing the type of oppression that was taking place at, that, at a small institutional level, um, I had insight into this as a chairperson of the Muslim Students Association at the time. And through starting that organization and campaigning around that type of ideas, that of access and success that resonates with the DA and learning more about its policies. I, we changed the political environment. We went into government. I was elected as a president at that campus. And I got a taste of what can be achieved, even at a small level, um, how you can change people's lives through um, doing your job properly, through ensuring that you don't take the responsibility you have for granted. And it's what's brought me to wh where I am today. I, from there, availed myself wherever I can where I can serve, where I think my skills can best be used and my sacrifices can best be used. Um, I've done that through availing myself to be elected as the DA Youth National Chairperson. I'm currently chairing the National DASO Steering Committee and I've now been elected into Parliament. And these are responsibilities that I don't take lightly. Now, last year there were reports that you had to file an assault charge against members of SASCO. Um, can you speak to us about this and do incidents like this ever just make you lose your fervor for the job? No, quite the opposite. In fact, it inspires me to go further. You know, when I started in politics for a year and a half, the SASCO governors are saying they obviously aligned with, with the ANC. Um, they prevented us from being recognized as a society to compete politically. It's very ironic that an organization aligned to an organization that was at the forefront of the liberation struggle to bring political freedoms was shutting down political space um, and contestation. But that's what has happened. You know, the fear of contestation, the fear to be opposed um, has led to these type of things. So it's happened when I started um, at NMMU. It happened um, when I've been at the Walter Sisulu University, for example, on a number of occasions where we prevented from even entering the campus. It happened at Teflop campus at the University of Limpopo um, in Mangkweng. And I think that's the incident you're referring to where we were beaten up with chairs. And it, it, it's, it's the type of culture where any type of opposition is not tolerated, um, any type of questioning what is going on is not tolerated, um, because the ruling party in particular, and it's a symptom of the ruling party in particular, cannot handle any type of opposition, cannot handle a contestation, and as they're losing more and more ground, they're going to become more and more violent, they're going to become more and more representative of what South Africans across this country fought against for so long and I think that is a very ironic cycle of an organization and something that South Africans need to be very vigilant towards to make sure we protect our democracy and make sure we protect the freedoms that are enshrined in our constitution.